everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we have some old world news today, another almanac where it's going to focus on, well, shooting. So it looks like we're getting some information, you know, with arrows, crawlers, uh, shots, bolts, balls and screaming skulls. This is, should be really, really interesting. A lot of us did focus on some range heavy armies. I am just over the moon. It looks like it's going to be every Monday from now on, it seems. So I am super, super happy. So let's start talking about some stuff. So, as with the other phases, the shooting phase is broken into four steps, which you follow in turn for each unit. Declare targets, roll to hit, roll to wound, remove casualties. Same as everything, right? Everyone and everything shoots in this phase, whether they're the lowly peasant bowmen, barbarian javelineers. Ooh, javelineers, interesting. Well, I guess we have them in mounted form, I guess. A macabre, uh, Kemrian screaming skull catapult, or high elven mage manifesting a fiery convocation. So, okay, here we go. All right, so we do have a bit of a detail here. Uh, longbows, so we've got range, 30 inch, That's in, that makes sense. Uh, strength, 3 AP, nothing. Okay, it's going to be very similar to 40k, it seems. Which I wouldn't really complain about too much. Or yes, we have to wait. We do have special rules like armor bane, volley fire. Same thing happens with the screaming skull catapult. So bombardment, cumbersome, flaming attacks, magical attacks. Move or shoot. That's still a thing. Okay. Uh, multiple wounds and... Yeah, okay. What really is interesting. It seems that we're not going to maybe have issues with the rolling to hit. No weapon skill? Well, ballistic skill? Very, very curious. Uh, but yeah, let's carry on. As you can imagine, I'm recording this live and I'm just super excited about this. Uh, so let's talk about the notes here. This weapon shoots like a stone thrower using the bombardment special rule. Okay, so it's still got that the whole, this is a stone thrower situation, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's go into the next section here, which is over here. First, pick a unit, declare its target. A unit can only shoot if it has ranged weapons. Haven't marched or charged that turn. So if you move, you can still shoot, but you can't if you march and isn't fleeing or in combat. To shoot, a model must have line of sight to its target, and you can't split fire in so and so. And you can't split fire. So in some cases, not every member of the unit can let loose. Right, yep. Yeah, same as old War of Fantasy. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm happy about that. Everything so far looks and feels like War of Fantasy. I know some people are going to complain about that, but nah. Uh, models can almost always shoot only once. Almost always. So some can have multiple shots. Uh, no matter how many attacks they have in their profile, unless they have the volley fire special rule or are stationed on a hill, only the front rank may fire. Ooh, okay. Usually sometimes the back rank could fire in eighth. I guess that's just to make it a little bit easier. Obviously, again, in the hill, they should be fine. Volley fire also, hmm, curious, curious. I'm assuming a lot of archers are going to have volley fire. I mean, we got that here with the longbow. Once the target has been chosen, it's time to roll to hit. Here's the big news. All style ballistic skill or BS on its profile is on its profile. It's back and it runs to 1 to 10. Okay, so that's back. Okay, good, 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 good. This is like the old targets, right? The higher BS, the easier it is to bullseye your target. Once your model reaches a BS of 6 or more, they start earning rerolls on their miss shot. Okay. Oh, I've just seen the to wound shot, and that's just made me so happy. Let's let's not get distracted though. Um, rolls to hit. So determine uh, to determine whether a model hits its target, you must make a roll to hit. You know, boom, boom poof, right? Uh, <laughs> to make a roll to hit, roll a d6 dice for each model that is shooting, and look up the target number that needs to be on the table below. Any dice that is equal or beats that target number shown after applying any modifiers have the hit the target so uh bs1 you need a six plus this is better i guess um bs2 a five plus bs3 a four plus this is going to be i guess in general for everyone uh bs6 or higher is the interesting stuff so if a model has bs6 or higher it gains re-roll should it have failed to hit while shooting the second roll usually has a lower chance of hitting on the table the first target on the table below on the table below. Sorry, my brain is just gone today. The first target number gi given is the first roll. The second is the second. Okay, right, let's see here. So if you get a six, you can re-roll on a six plus again. Right? Yeah. 
Okay, this is not too bad. This is actually, I think this is actually not too bad because the old system was like to hit, you needed a 10 plus, which was back then you had to roll a six and then another six, which was more or less impossible with the standard on how it was. Uh, this is actually a better system from what I can see. I'm going to have to do some testings. I'll like get the uh, eighth edition book and just use this rule and see how it works. But so far, that's not too bad at all. Uh, right, let's continue. Of course, it's not as always as easy as that. There are various negative modifiers to your shooting. My, it's minus one to hit if you've moved. Okay, that's still there. Fair. You're at long range. That's still there too. You're receiving a charge. Okay, stand and shoot. Or if the target has partial cover. On top of that, a neutral one always misses, while negative modifiers can stack plus six. You may need to find yourself having to roll a seven, eight. Oh, that's still there. That never mind. Okay. So they have made it easier, but then the modifiers can come into the fact where, again, you can get up to a 10, which is a six and then another six, which I know is actually supposed to be 10, but you know what I mean, right? Um, well, if you've, if you've played Warhammer Fantasy, you know what I mean. There's more old school goodness in this next step in which you roll to wound by comparing the strength attack of the attack against the toughness or attack. There are even toughness caps, a strength plea, a free bow is simply too weak to harm a beast with toughness. Oh, okay, yeah, th cool. That's actually quite cool. So, um, strength 1 weapon against toughness 9 won't do any damage. Uh, strength 4 against toughness 10 won't do any damage. I do like this. This is very old school, and at the end of the day, like, we wanted it to feel like Warhammer Fantasy without turning it more like... Um, like 40k and Age of Sigma doing, let's just be honest there. So this is actually really, really good. Uh, let's continue here. But it wouldn't be Warhammer without a saving throw to which your, uh, which your opponent will make during the step. It's a familiar process. Compare the armor penetration of the weapon with the armor value of the model it's hitting. Light armor grants 6 plus. Cool. Heavy armor 5 plus, which can then be boosted with a shield, a barded mount, and certain spells and magical items. Ooh, just the barded mount? Would the normal one not also provide a saving throw? I mean, it used to. Huh. I mean, they're not going to give us all the information just yet, and obviously this is focusing on um, range weaponry. We'll likely get everything else when we get the melee stuff too, uh, which I imagine is soon. There's probably a hint at the bottom. Let's continue. Uh, there is a small difference, however, as models can also have a ward save. This cannot be modified by AP and is rolled for as a separate save made after the armor uh, roll has failed. Yeah, again, very, very, it's, fi it's Warhammer Fantasy. And then th the final step is to remove casualties and take panic attack, panic tests. I'm at the point of having a panic attack <laughs> when necessary. This is super simple. Remove one model for every wound caused unless the target has more than one wound. You know the drill. You need to take a panic test if shooting has killed more than a quarter of the models in the unit. But we'll get to that, uh, what happens to them in another article. Okay. Oh, we do have a lot more information here. Oh. Okay, there's not said anything there. But next week is going to be close combat. Okay, cool. Let's continue here. Sorry, it threw me off because I saw that grade. Uh, <laughs> there are plenty of weird and wonderful shooting units in Warhammer the Old World and a plethora of special rules to go with them. Beasts, uh, big beasties have breath weapons. Some skirmish cavalry have fire and flee. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds pretty interesting. While dwarfen iron drakes have cinder blast bombs that can quick shot. Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah, I would love to know. I, I want to know more about fire and flee, to be honest. But yeah, okay, let's continue. As for magic, there are two categories of spells to be fired off in the shooting phase magic missiles, yeah, and magical vortexes. Human wizards using uh, battle magic can, for instance, blast off a quick fireball, while those blessed with the dark gods can use the lore of demonology. Oh, okay. This is new. Very new. Huh. To conjure a vortex of chaos. You know, it would have been nice if they would have memed with purple sun. Uh, but yeah, let's talk, uh, let's talk about the fireball. So, casting value plus 8, range 24. Effect the target unit suffers 2d6 strength, 4 hits. Ooh. Each with an AP of unknown. I guess they left that blank. This unit has the flaming attack special rule. This spell has the flaming attack special rule. And... Demonology. Lore of demonology. I guess that's giving us like a chaos undivided lore? 
which kind of makes sense, considering that uh, the Warriors of Chaos would likely be very largely undivided at the moment. Could make sense. But yeah, Magical Vortex, casting value of 8. Ooh, 8 for Vortex. Um, hmm. Uh, range 15, okay. Remains in play. This is why I'm kind of scared. Place a small 3-inch blast template. Yes, templates are back! Uh, so this, uh, so that the central hole is within 15 inches of the caster. Whilst in play, the template is treated as dangerous terrain. The template moves a uh, d6 in random direction during the start of turn subphase, every start of turn subphase. Any units, friend or foe, uh, that touches it or suffers d6 plus 1 strength free hits. Okay, so it's very similar. Again, no, no value on the AP. I guess they're still testing that out. Um, this is this is wild, man. This is wild. I might sound a little bit nervous today uh, because I, I was expecting this a little bit later. I was literally going to go out and go shopping. This is wild. Law of Demonology. That sounds so cool. That sounds so cool. I wonder what that's going to be. But yeah, what do you guys think about this? Honestly, this is just Warhammer Fantasy. This is... It looks like Warhammer Fantasy. It feels like Warhammer Fantasy. This is great. This is absolutely great. I've got to do some testing. I've got to do some testing. Now we know some stuff. I can use the 8th edition army books. Maybe I can uh, see how everything's going to work. But yeah, I'm super happy about this. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. I'll be live a little bit later. We can talk about this a little bit more in person. I can't wait. I'm so happy, man. You have no idea how stupidly happy I am about this. See you guys in a little bit.